Do you like the Calvin Brodus Jr., okay? We're big fans of Snoop. Obviously. Who isn't? Young people, Obviously. old people. I, I saw Snoop 1997 Lollapalooza in Alpine up in Wisconsin, okay? He played it. And he comes out in Wisconsin. He is wearing the number four Brett Favre jersey. Everyone went crazy. People love the guy. And he just released his 17th studio album. 17th? It's called I Want to Thank Me. This track is so good. This is the old school one. Snoop also just kicked off the North American leg of his world tour, Young and Old. You know Snoop's music. Whoever, right? They all know it. They all love it. Look yeah. this man. Snoop loves the NFL. Remember yeah. when John Ross was drafted? He was really close to him. He's yeah. got lots of friends in mm -hmm. the league, including somebody that we love here on Good Morning Football. And to a certain group of kids, He's not just the entertainer, the singer, the personality, the icon that you see on TV. He's just Coach Snoop. And our Willie McGinnis sat down with his longtime friend to talk music, the NFL, and mm -hmm. the kids that he coaches in his youth football league. How do you feel? So good! How do you feel? So good! How do you feel? So good! When people say Snoop Dogg, people think icon, they think entrepreneur, they think movie star, all these different things. But you started a whole youth football program called the SYFL, the Snoop Youth Football League. Why did you want to form your own football league, and how did you use that to change young lives of young men? Well, the first thing I wanted to do was put a football league in the community that wasn't so financially based. The coaches would charge so much money, and the kids would get so little but have to pay so much. It was like, I wanted to change that mentality to make it about the kids. And if the kids had good grades, that would kind of work to their benefit as well. So we was just looking out for kids and trying to get them on a path of being student athletes. People don't know much about Coach Snoop. Right. How did Coach Snoop derive? I think Coach Snoop came from great coaches I had in my life. Uh, one of them was Coach Neely. He coached me for the Vidars. He was one of the greatest coaches I ever had. Because he instilled God. He instilled teamwork. I never heard him cuss. He just had a different perspective on how he coached us. And I felt like he rubbed off on me as a man. When I became a man, I felt the passion of helping my sons out at first. And then once I started to help my sons, I started to see other kids that needed help. Oh, 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 oh. Where did your passion for football originate? I had a friend named James Burton. Dig him. Dig him. <laughs> me and Dig him went to uh, Roosevelt together. This was 1978. And he came to school with his Rough Rider jersey on. I'm like, man, what's that? He said, man, I play for the Rough Riders. I'm like, what's that? He said, man, we practice at Poly. And I went to practice with him. And I was watching all my homeboys, Diggum, Stanley, Terry Nelson, Warren G, all of them. They just was balling. I'm like, man, I'm missing this. So the next year, I came and tried out for the Rough Riders. That's how we played against y'all with played the Played against us with the Pacers. Y'all blew us off 42 <laughs> nothing. You was the running back. We was, was good. Like, Cuz, who is this number 42 <laughs> that keeps striking up and down the field? And then y'all had a white quarterback that was Sean out Wyman. of this world. Sean Wyman was a quarterback. He was running play actions, and I'm like, y'all was too much for us, because y'all team was cheating, man. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of people see you now, and they're like, Snoop played football? I'm like, yeah, Snoop played football. Snoop was pretty good at football. We from Long Beach, what, man. What, 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 your, your position. What my was position, your position, my friend James Burton turned me on to football, and he was a quarterback, so I naturally went to play quarterback. You wanted to touch the football, Exactly, of so I felt like that was my role, and I used to love Doug Williams, so I took number 12, played quarterback for like three or four years, and then once I got to a certain level, I liked the receiver spot because the quarterback spot, you had to have too much information. There was too much going on. I really wasn't with all that. I wanted to just <laughs> give me the damn give me ball. The ball. Yeah, let me, let me do what I do, man. I ain't got time for all that. And then once I got a little bit older, they was like, yeah, we're going to work out. We're going to run at the beach, huh? Run to the beach. I'm going to be right here when y'all get back. So I kind of like lost interest, but when I was in it, I was in it playing quarterback, wide receiver. I didn't play too much defense because I, you know, I wasn't built you like that. No, no, I wasn't built like that. I remember 92, wow. deep cover. I was a junior at USC and I was making my way, my path to the NFL. You already had hit big with entertainment, man. Just talk about, like, from right there to Voyage, how things got started for you in your career. Well, coming from Long Beach, the aspirations were first to be an athlete because most of the athletes that came from Long Beach were successful. But when I seen that the athletic side really wasn't, you know, what I wanted to get into and I couldn't focus on that as much as I could with music, the music thing started to pull me away in high school and I started to like really love rapping and not be afraid and not be ashamed and rap for all y'all, rap wherever I went, just rap, rap with a rapper. 
So me, Warren G, and Nate Dogg, we really focused in lockdown on making music. It's the bounce of the wild, creeping and trolling, you can get shown, and Snoop Doggy Dogg. You sit back now and you're looking at all these guys man, in the NFL, well, like I, a proud papa. Man, I'm like a proud grandfather. You know, I'm like <laughs> Juju, John Ross, Black Mamba, all these guys that came out of my league, what they do on the field is exciting. But what they do off the field is more exciting. Juju's personality, the commercials he's getting, the way he's handling adversity, that's what we prepared him for. John Ross. A great catch for John Ross. Man. But he's look what he does off the field. He comes back and he does the camps. All sure those they beautiful the things, man. Come on, man. Like that trumps what you do on the football field. I don't care about you scoring touchdowns and making sports center highlights. I care about what you do for the community and what you give back. My new gloves for today. It could be great in football for a certain point in time, but you want to be a great man all the time. And that's what we was trying to instill. We was trying to instill the fact that this football thing may not work out for you, but the persona that you have, the way that you respect people, the way that you, you know, are doing your business is going to carry you further than football. And football is just a gateway to get you to where you got to get to. I want to go through a couple of quick hitters with you. I'm going to start with your favorite. Give me your top three quarterbacks right now. Right now? Right now. Russell Wilson. Lamar Jackson. You see what he did the other day? He did a video game move. I was playing with him up there. <laughs> X A B. Ba ba ba. Boop boop. Touchdown. Right. Hello. Oh, he broke his ankles and he's got a touchdown. Two step Tommy. Two man. step Tommy. <laughs> Brady, man. <laughs> don't forget yeah. Tommy, man. I know he's 20 years in, That's but don't forget God, about man. Tommy. I love Tom Brady. Yeah, I said it. Who did it like me? Who want the dice? Bang. Your most vicious running backs in the league. Oh, Henry mm. from the Titans. He's a monster. Oh, 33 from the Packers. I like Mike him. Jones. I like him a lot. I like uh, Chubb. Uh, Chubb. He hard. They okay. don't feed him enough. I think a lot of fans already know, but you've been outspoken about your favorite team. Yes, the Steelers. Steelers. the Steelers. The Steelers is yes, your favorite, favorite team. Bro, give me a couple of AFC teams you think might represent an AFC championship. Give me a couple of teams in the NFC. In the NFC championship, the Packers and the Seahawks. Russell Wilson got that thing. Ah, come on, let's get it. And then I'm going to take in the AFC, oh, two step Tommy and. Uh, That's the Patriots. And the Ravens. And the Ravens? Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. You got a Super Bowl, it's too early. I want the Ravens to win. I want to see Lamar Jackson. You want the Ravens to win the Super Bowl? Yeah, I do. So you're going on record by saying Pittsburgh not going to be there this year. I'm not, not saying that. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Appreciate you, dog. Love Always, you, man. man. Love Love you, brother. Brother. LBC's finest, baby. <laughs> five, five entertainment. Couldn't have said it better. LBC's finest. Mm, that's right. How cool is that? He's a player at USC, and Snoop had already made it huge. It's already Snoop Dogg, and he takes Willie under his wing, and the two of them are still friends all these years later. Willie's obviously one of our favorite guys. He works on the network, and Snoop Dogg, their friendship is so cool. It's great to see it. Imagine that was your football coach. I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> Sean, I don't know what your first coach was. Mine, like, threw a Diet Coke at me and was a complete jerk, and I didn't <laughs> like him. He really did. Like, like a Snoop. Can? Yeah, an actual can, because I missed the blocking assignment. And that's kind of common. Like, sometimes they can be jerks. It's like the coolest coach ever. You always remember your your first coach, you always remember your high school coach, so what a cool moment for those kids, and, and great job, Willie Mack. Uh, he's so smooth. I, I played against him. I worked with him. Uh, he just celebrated a, a birthday on Wednesday, too. Yes, so happy birthday! Great stuff, man. A couple of OGs, and, and, and the two of them don't age. Like, mm -hmm. they, they, they have not mm -hmm. aged at all in the yeah. last 20 years. Nate has some theories on that. But he's not here today. Okay. <laughs> Fortunately. Pretty cool. We had Fat Joe in our studio yesterday. Yeah. Snoop Dogg joining the network for an exclusive sit down yeah. with our very own Willie McGinnis. What a time to be Pretty celebrating cool. the 100th year of the NFL. More Good Morning Football on the way. You need to see every Lamar Jackson touchdown. All 40 total of them. Maybe not on this show, but we'll show you the. Okay. Better set aside some time. How many was it? Nine yesterday? How many touchdowns did he have? Niner? Yeah, it was 19. It was actually. up there, yeah. yeah. 19. I, I fell asleep mm -hmm. at like touchdown seven. It was a lot. I was like, all right, bye. Take him off the field. Uh, Oakland. Ooh, last call. Last and, day ever. hey, Baker, will he hold on to any hard feelings talking, taking on Cliff Kingsbury and those Cardinals in the desert? From the desert. Oh, mama didn't raise no wuss.